Have you ever seen diffuse flesh color popules in someone? In this video, we are gonna talk about one of the skin diseases known as molluscum contagism. It is caused by a special type of pox virus called molluscum contagism virus or MCV. This condition usually appears in children, but anyone can get it. The virus is spread from direct person-to-person -person contact or through contaminated fomites, such as clothes, chairs, towel, and things like that. Because the virus stays dormant on those surfaces and easily can be transmitted when someone touches them, but it can be transmitted through the air by coughing or sneezing, because it survives only on the outer layer of the skin and surfaces. Another way of transmission is swimming pools. Swimming pools act as a vector to transmit the virus from infected person to another individual, because the virus easily can be shed in the water and transmit to those who swim in the same pool. This is usually a benign condition, and the result of being infected is a small, raised white or pink or skin color papules that can appear anywhere on the body. This is the only symptom of the disease in most cases. When someone is infected with the virus, the incubation period is between 2 to 6 weeks for developing the symptoms. The pearly papules are typically under 6 mm in diameter, averagely between 2 to 5 mm and they can be seen in different parts of the body, commonly on the face, trunk, arms and legs. They usually have a small dent at the top near the center. We sometimes call it belly button. If the disease is the result of sexual contact, the papules are seen on the genitals or lower abdomen. They are usually itchy and firm in touch. The prevalence of molluscum contagism is about 8,000 cases among 100,000 and the incidence rate is 1,200 cases annually. Girls and boys are affected equally in the childhood, but in adulthood, the prevalence is higher in men for about three times than women, and generally it's more common in developing countries. There are some factors increase the risk of getting molluscum contagism. The first one, and also the important one, is immunodeficiency. It's been proved it is strongly associated with an underlying cellular immunodeficiency. So, anything that weakens our immune system, such as taking corticosteroid, being on chemotherapy, or diseases like HIV can increase the risk of being infected. Children who are between 1 to 10 years of age, especially if they have atopic dermatitis or eczema, are more susceptible. Living in a humid and warm area, in having close contact with other people or being in crowded places. Being sexually active is another risk factor for getting the disease. Because this disease can actually act like a sexual transmitted disease and the virus can directly pass through physical contacts. The diagnosis of molluscum contagism is usually made by seeing the typical papules with a special characteristic that is explained before. If you are not sure about a diagnosis just based upon the symptoms, the histological examinations can confirm the diagnosis. Hematoxylin and eosin staining can reveal keratinocytes containing cytoplasmic inclusion bodies, which is known as molluscum bodies. Another less common method that is not indicated is using electron microscope to see pox virus particles in the biopsy sample. Laboratory studies cannot help us in this case. Just in case the disease's origin is sexually, the patient should be evaluated for the presence of other sexually transmitted diseases. And if the patient has extensive lesions, the laboratory studies must be performed for diagnosing any possible immunodeficient condition. Molluscum contagism is a self-limited disease, but our choice of therapy is important for successful remission, reduction rate of transmission, resolution of pruritus, and prevent scarring that can result from the lesions. On the other hand, treatment would also reduce psychological stress, so the choice of therapy is important to lower the possible risks. Due to the self-limited nature of the disease and lack of enough studies, strong evidence for efficacy of any treatment is still lacking. But after all this, there are some options for the first-line treatment. Now let's take a look at them. Cryotherapy is a method in which the doctor dip a cotton swab in liquid nitrogen and applies it to the lesions to free them. After a few minutes, the lesions can be easily removed by using numbing creams. This is a rapid effective way of treatment and usually well tolerated in adolescents. But the pain associated with this and also potential adverse effects 
include scarring and hyperpigmentation, especially in dark skins, can be deterrent reason not to use this method. Another treatment way is curettage. Here the doctor applies a topical anesthetic first, then uses a curette to physically remove the lesions. The possible risk of minor bleeding and pain can be disturbing for some children. Another treatment is using topical agents, such as podophyllotoxin. This cream must be applied for each lesion individually. It is indicated just in men and it's not recommended for pregnant women. Other topical agents include salicylic acid, potassium hydroxide, tretinoin, iodine, and cantharidin. The studies have shown the treatment rate of using cantharidin is 90% in children. It must be applied topically on the lesions and avoid spreading it to other areas. It is crucial to start treatment early in immunocompromised patients because the risk of getting the severe and persistent form of the disease is higher in this group. Using less invasive methods such as oral or topical therapy are more preferred because therapies that result into wounds may increase risk of infection itself. Intravenous antibiotic, like using sidafavir, is indicated in severe form of the disease in immunocompromised patients. There are some tips useful to prevent the spread of the virus. The first one and the best way is to follow hygiene habits. Wash your hands and keep your hand clean all the time to prevent the spread of the virus as well as too many other infections. Avoid sexual contacts if you have molluscum contagion until you get fully cured and no papule is left on your body. Avoid touching the bumps and try to cover them with clothing when you are in touch with other people. And let it open to the air when there is no one around cause being exposed to air promotes healthy skin. And finally, never share personal items like comb, towel or hairbrush.